Hello friends, today we will gain knowledge about field inventory and the main objectives of this topic will be number one to give a brief introduction about field inventory, number second to outline various steps involved in the preparation of field inventory, number third to highlight the importance of field inventory for conservation of species, number fourth to familiarize students with other roles of field inventory. So, first of all let us have a general introduction about the field inventory. Inventory refers to baseline floristic information including composition of land communities and the species present within a specified area. A simple inventory is just a species list indicating which species are found in an area. Field inventory gives a direct insight into diversity and is at the core of baseline assessments of terrestrial and aquatic plant diversity. Inventories are typically the first point of reference for interpretive studies and for assessments of ecological values and allow conservation efforts to be targeted towards species of particular importance. Field inventory can be targeted to particular group of flora or may simply aim to survey as much of the local diversity as practicable. They are used to determine species richness, justification for conservation refugia and for promoting public awareness. Field inventory is often a specific requirement of environmental assessment studies, allowing regulators to understand the diversity significance of subject habitats. Field inventories are created on multiple spatial scales from local localities to national parks to states or countries and even continents. Inventories of separate taxa even when undertaken by the same researchers will often be published as separate papers. It is important to begin an inventory with a thorough base of the existing information. Considerations should be given to all sampling identified vegetation types within a steady area. Field inventory provides resource material for plant systematic studies. Among the very important items to be included in the inventory report are number one methods that includes recording, identification as well as a precise definition of the area. Number second goals or purpose of the inventory work. Number third context and evaluation of the inventory results in a regional context at least. Limitations including reference to areas not adequately surveyed, times when visitors should have been made but we are not, unusual conditions affecting floral display such as drop and any related considerations that will help to provide a basis for the next inventory. And threats, it includes potential and actual threats to perpetuation of plants and plant communities including pollution, development, overuse, competition with invasive aliens, etc. Dear students, now we will move on the next objective that steps involved in the preparation of field inventory. Substantial knowledge of plant collection, plant classification, plant morphology, identification procedures and herbarium procedures is required to conduct adequate botanical inventories. Various steps involved in the preparation of field inventory are number one is field survey. It involves repeated visits to each selected site during different seasons of the year. Number second, collection of plants. During collection, field notebook would be used. A well designed field notebook has numbered sheets with printed pro forma for entering field notes such as botanical name of the plant family, vernacular name, locality, altitude and date of collection in the field. The multiple detachable silvers at the lower end of the sheet separated by perforated lines and varying the serial number of the sheet can be used as tags for multiple specimens of the species collected from a particular site in order to serve as ready reference to the information recorded in the field notebook. It is important to make collection of complete specimens including stems, leaves, roots and reproductive structures 
preferably mature flowers and fruits. The specimens would be placed in the field press at the first opportunity, either directly after collection or sometimes after a temporary storage in a polythene bag. Trees and shrubs should be collected with both vegetative and flowering shoots to enable the representation of both leaves and flowers. All information concerning the plant should be recorded in the field notebook. It's advisable to collect a few specimens of each species from the site to ensure that reserve specimens are available if one or more get destroyed and also to ensure that duplicates can be deposited in different herb area when finally mounted on sheets. Collection Equipments the following items are essential in the field for most of the taxonomic work. Field notebook, field press, plastic bags, transparent polythene bags, digging tools, pruning shears, newspapers, digital camera, 10x or 20x hand lens, pocket knife, GPS that is global positioning system, soft leaded pencil, ball pen, plastic or glass bottles, liquid preservatives like formalin, glacial acetic acid, ethyl alcohol, chloroform, storage boxes, etc. Pressing or processing of plants. Once a plant specimen has been collected and field data is recorded, the specimen needs to be pressed and dried using a plant press. A plant press consists of two panels of wood or iron. 12 into 18 inches with two press straps or chains which are used to tighten the press. The plant specimen is placed in a folded piece of newspaper. The plant should be arranged so that upper and lower leaf surfaces, flowers and fruits are visible. A specimen shorter than 15 inches should be kept directly in the folded newspaper after loosely spreading the leaves and branches. Herbs which are generally collected along with the roots. If longer than 15 inches, can be folded in the form of V, N or W. Always ensuring that the terminal part of the leaves, flowers and fruits should be erect. And when finally mounted, the specimens can be easily studied without having to invert the herbarium sheet. Drying of plants. The press may be placed in the sun and the blotters have to be changed every day until the plant specimen gets completely dried within 3 to 4 days. Artificial heat source of plant dryers is also used sometimes. The specimens are dried by keeping them between the folds of old newspapers. It's necessary to change these papers at regular intervals until the plants are well dried. Pasting or mounting of plant specimens. The process of attaching pressed and dried plant specimens on herbarium sheets is known as mounting of specimens. Once plant specimens have been pressed and dried, they are mounted or pasted on the herbarium sheets of standard size. Labeling A herbarium label of standard size is glued to the sheet, usually in the lower right hand corner, after the specimen has been mounted on the herbarium sheet. The specimen label should include plant's name, family, local name, locality, latitude, longitude, altitude, date of collection, collection number, brief field note, and collector's name. Field note writing. The information from the field notebook is transferred to a typed or computer generated herbarium label or specimen label. The field notebook information should be written in blank ink so that it should stay for a long time. Identification of specimens Identification involves recognizing an unknown specimen with an already known taxon and assigning it a correct rank and position in an extant classification. For identification, the scientific method is to first study the characters of the plant both from the specimen as well as the label attached to the mounted sheet and check them with by comparing its desirable characters with known specimens of herbarium or with various forms of taxonomic literature. 
Identification of the plant specimens collected will be done with the help of herbarium studies. This will be achieved by visiting different herbaria and comparing unknown specimens with duly identified specimens stored therein. Alternatively, the specimens will be sent to different experts who will help in the proper determination. Identification will be authenticated by using various types of taxonomic literature such as floras, monographs or manuals. The identification keys provided in the sources of literature, e-floras, calfloras, ecological flora of British Islands will also help in correct identification. Nomenclature Nomenclature deals with the determination of correct name for a taxon. The nomenclature of plants is governed by the International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi and Plants through its rules and recommendations. The online database plant list will be used for verifying the spelling and correct author citation of all the plant species documented. Classification Classification is arrangement of organisms into groups based on their similarities. The groups are in turn assembled into more inclusive groups until all the organisms have been assembled into single most inclusive group in sequence of increasing inclusiveness. The groups are assigned to a fixed hierarchy of categories such as species, genus, family, order, class and division. The final arrangement constituting a system of classification. All the recorded plant species will be organized into respective genera and families following APG third classification. Accession seal. The mounted, labeled and identified specimens are then stamped with a rubber stamp or seal, usually on the top of right hand corner of the sheet. The stamp carries the name of the herbarium. Accession number. An accession number along with date of accession is added for an accurate record keeping on accession register as well as on herbarium sheet. Preservation of documenting specimens. The fully identified and duly classified plant specimens are then preserved in the form of herbarium sheets and are stored for future use and comparison in a recognized herbarium. Use of herbarium chemicals. Specimens are sprayed with fungicide like chrysol and 0.1% solution of mercury chloride. Besides these, other herbarium chemicals are also used such as paradichlorobenzene and naphthalene balls. Fumigation Fumigation involves exposing specimens to the volatile substances like mixture of ethylene dichloride and carbon tetrachloride or a mixture of paradichlorobenzene and naphthalene balls or Dow Fume 75 in a closed fumigation chamber. The herbarium specimens are kept in the fumigation chamber for 7 to 10 days. The fumigation chamber should not open during the period of fumigation. Dear students, now we will discuss third objective that's importance of field inventory for conservation of species. Inventories are some of the most important tools that aid biodiversity conservation. Field inventory provides information about which species exist in an area. This is crucial information that helps to determine the conservation value or significance of an area. That's the conservation of biodiversity that will result from protecting the area. Different areas have different types of species and different numbers of species. Certain areas termed biodiversity hotspots such as the Amazon rainforest can have hundreds of times the number of species per unit area present in them than others. Field inventory makes more sense to conserve an area having more species than an area having less as the same amount of effort will lead to more species being saved. When inventory is developed at different times are compared it can be concluded that which species have gone extinct from an area and are no longer found there. It can also be concluded that which species have invaded the area from other places. Inventories can be said to be the first step at conservation of biodiversity in an area and is the first step at research relating to conservation.
taxonomic research and the sharing of associated data are an essential basis for further biodiversity studies including surveys, inventories and ecological and biological resource research. Herbarium specimens are often the only reference material for lesser known species and any data accompanying the specimens can be used to infer the species distribution and the states of its habitat. These specimens have historically been collected for taxonomic purposes. However, their use in applied biodiversity research is becoming more and more apparent. After third objective, dear students, we will discuss our last objective of today's topic that's other roles of field inventory. Surveys and inventories provide the essential baseline data for monitoring change caused by factors such as habitat conversion and climate change and for determining conservation priorities in country. It provides a perfect basis for monitoring habitat change in the future, especially related to climate change. Geographical data acquired through plant specimen and seed collections and vegetation surveying are particularly important for determining species range. Information can be plotted in GIS systems and used for analyzing species distributions and their link to conservation assessments and ecological niche modeling. The latter is particularly relevant to identifying change in habitat conditions and species distributions over time, including predictions of future conditions under climate change. Field inventories are a source of information about the flora of a region or a locality or of a country. Thus, it provides us the reliable and viable record of change of our past floristic wealth. Preserved specimens in herbaria are used in almost all types of taxonomic research such as monographs and revisions. The diversity and distribution of the world's flora is mainly based on the field inventories. Herbarium preserve type specimens and thus serve as repositories for storing the original material collected by the taxonomists while discovering new species. The type specimens also help in the correct identification of plants. Herbarium material can be used in studying the palynology, anatomy, photochemistry and molecular aspects of important species. Field inventories are a data store in which the scientific information on plants is available to public regarding the floristic wealth of regions, states or countries. Herbarium specimens along with florals and manuals aid in plant identification. Field inventory provides resource material for plant systematic studies. It serves as a reference collection for new taxa known as voucher specimen. It provides a reliable baseline for counting populations and determining endangered species. It uncovers multitudes of new species, many of which will have immediate economic impacts. It trains many people as naturalists and scientists who can leverage these skills further in their own lives and that of society. It distributes wealth from the developed world to four corners of the earth by employing indigenous and native observers and collectors. Dear friends, this brings us to end of this lecture on field inventory. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Have a nice day.